got shot. Okay, that probably is lethal. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Okay, hello and welcome everybody. We are here for match five with the list that you see on screen right here. We are playing Academic Amulet. In other words, we're playing some field trips and you should know the drill by now. If you haven't seen the previous matches, then check them out. But we're here to try to evaluate the use of this card in Amulet. And that's what we're going to do. I also have a little bit of news. In case you haven't heard, among other things that are coming to us from Modern Horizons 2 and the upcoming D&D themed set, we're getting Counterspell in Modern. I mean, you probably have heard this by now. But regardless, I have long been predicting the printing of Counterspell in Modern Horizons. Not from any advanced knowledge, but just because even when Modern Horizons 1 was spoiled, I felt like Counterspell was an automatic shoe in include, and it was shocking to me and many others that Counterspell was omitted from Modern Horizons 1. In fact, there was a stream that Wizards of the Coast had to officially announce that Counterspell was not going to be present because it was so prevalent, the idea that Counterspell would be in Modern, that Wizards of the Coast felt they should make an announcement that Counterspell was not going to be in Modern Horizons 1, and I immediately took this as a sign that it was omitted and would make an appearance here in Modern Horizons 2. So I, of course, already have my four copies of Counterspell. The art that I am most fond of is this one right here, and I've had these four since far before this announcement. So at some point in time, whenever Counterspell does become Modern Legal, we'll be playing that one in a blue-white control deck of some sort. More on that much later, probably sometime in June, as I believe that's when Modern Horizons 2 releases. So we got Abundant Harvest and Counterspell to test out here. So we got some stuff coming down the docket. But for now, let's focus on the new cards that we've been given more recently in the form of Field Trip. I will have some thoughts at the end of this video if you want to know how I feel about the deck list. Stick around till the end for that, and I will see you guys in the games. Alrighty, we're here for the match. See if we can make this a 4-1 or end up just 3-2. and two. Either way, I'll be happy. Maybe we can see some field trips in action here. We play against Blademaster777. I feel like I recognize this username. I'm not really sure what from, though. On the draw, sadly. That's all right, though. And we are given a hand that contains Double Amulet, Dryad, and Titan. And we even have a green source and Cavernous Souls to cast our Dryad. So any bounce land makes this hand quite good. Still turn 3 Titan, not a turn 2 Titan, but... I mean, I suppose if we don't find a Bounce Land or a Garen Brig, then we could be in some amount of trouble, but I am willing to give this one a shot. If this Cavern were a land that didn't produce green mana, then I might actually mulligan this hand as we see our opponent play turn one Inspiring Vantage. We're playing against Red-White Prowess. Didn't get to see the new white one drop that our opponents could frequently have access to. Forget the name of it at the moment. Maybe we'll see it in action later on, but let's just go ahead and deploy one of our amulets here and set up for a potential turn two Dryad if we top deck a bounce land of any sort. And yeah. Even if we top deck a Crumbling Vestige here, we would still have a turn three Titan because we could play Vestige to make three mana for Dryad, then play land, untap it, play Amulet. And then the turn after, we could play tap land plus tap land, and each would untap twice to give us six mana, even if we didn't have Vesuva to copy the, uh, the Crumbling Vestige. So if we draw a crumbling, a crumbling Vestige as well, that will allow us to do the things we want to do. Our opponent's on a little bit of a slow start here. I mean, Light Up the Stage is a good card for them, though, and they have Inspiring Vantage. Perhaps they didn't have a second land drop here. Blister Coil, weird. One mana, one, one. Whenever they cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus one, plus one, and untaps. All right, so we have not yet found access to a way to cast Dryad here, but that is all right. We can still find a bounce land at some point in time. I'm just going to go ahead and get a Valakut into play here as well. I don't see a reason not to. If we have to, we can play Vesuva, Copy, and Cavern and float two colorless when it comes into play and name Giant so that we can have potential double green for Titan even if our Dryad dies. Or at least we'll have one green set up from one of the single caverns that we have. That is assuming we're not just dead this turn, which may not be a good assumption. 
opponent's got super prowess over here. Two creatures getting plus one, plus one for every spell, and a free spell like Gutshot is a good way to start the turn. If they have another light at the stage, they can cast it as well. And they do. And they cast it as well. <laughs> this is quickly turning into a very good start from our opponent. There's the one drop I was talking about. Clever Lumamancer. A one mana zero one that gets plus two, plus two whenever they cast an instant or sorcery. So this is another Strixhaven card that is in popular usage. Oh man, if only I had explosives on one. We'd be blowing up two of our amulets as well, though. So I don't know if that would be the absolute best. So, I mean, we have no choice but to take this damage here. Mutagenic growth. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage. And I get to untap their bush coil weird. Value. Taking 10. Oof. Taking 14. Yeah, 14. If they have another spell where, like a bolt here, which is dead. Yeah, there it is. All right, well, that can happen. And uh, kudos to our opponent for having a quite explosive hand there. They didn't even need Lumamancer and play to do all of that. Here we want explosives, clearly. Arch seems like it could have applications, so we'll bring that one in. Um, Rex H could be good if our opponent might have Blood Moon, which I'm not sure that I believe is the case. We'll bring in the Dismembers to deal with their Lumamancers and other prowess creatures. And I think that's about all we want. Field Trip seems alright. I think it's better than Explore, since it sets up some life gain and some stabilization due to Pest Summoning, perhaps. Also gets us a Basic. I don't know, though. It's kind of debatable. Um, but I think we can trim some explorers. Obviously, we want, to, we want to trim tribe scouts here because our opponent has lava darts and gut shots. Actually, we might need to trim all of the tribe scouts against that type of effect. I'm not sure. Gut shot is the one I'm most afraid of, honestly. But I mean, we can't just we can't just sit here with zero turn one ramp spells. That is one of the downsides of playing overgrown arch in your deck over arboreal grazers. This is a turn two play, which is significantly different than a turn one play, but at least it doesn't die to a single bolt effect plus a prowess trigger on a one two creature, for example, so that's interesting. I don't really love trimming down more on scouts, though, to be honest. I think we can trim one field trip, perhaps. And a Sonar's Pact and the Bog, perhaps, as well. I don't mind that. But we'll run it back this way and see what happens. If we get our scout just uh, immediately killed, then it sucks to suck, I guess. Well, now we have a really slow turn two scout, but um, I mean, hmm. If we top deck any on tap source, we can play Dryad into Titan on turn three and turn four, and we do have a scout potentially if it stays in play. So I'm going to try this. It's not the most fantastic, but we'll play Garenbrig and pass it back. So we can play our scout this upcoming turn and either play a bounce land or a Vesuva copying Garenbrig, depending on what we feel like. Inspiring Vantage, one drop. Lumancer. All right. I mean, there's our untap source. So I suppose we're playing the scout. And I guess bounce land right now lets us play forest, dryad, tap land like Vesuva, and then have an untap source to go for a titan. So... I think we're supposed to play Bounce Land. It opens us up to a potential Cleansing Wildfire. Hmm. And then we wouldn't even be able to play Dryad this upcoming turn. I don't really want to get exposed to Wildfire. If we play Vesuva, Copy, and Garenbrig, then the turn after we can play Forest, Dryad, Bounce Land, pick up the Forest, and still be able to cast Titan the turn after. So I think it's probably correct to go ahead and play out the Vesuva here. Our opponent just goes, gut shot this guy, attack you for a bunch. Like, Manamorphose, double lightning bolt, swing. That could happen. That is a real possibility. Let's see if they have the removal spell to point out our tribe scout. At this point, it would just be soaking up some amount of damage. Exactly one damage. <laughs> yeah, not the best look for tribe scout that I've ever seen, but uh, that's all right. We get to play turn three Dryad and a turn four Titan. Thanks to Garen Brig, of course, and Bounce Lands plus the requisite number of untapped sources, so that's nice. We might have to block with our Dryad, however, which would be interesting. 
stronghold. I don't know if that one actually matters. Uh, yeah, let's play out the forest. We'll play out a dryad. Play out a growth chamber, I suppose. No reason to expose the garrison. It's not like we're going to be able to use it to haste anyways. Yeah, I don't think there's a reason to not play out a bounce lane here, so that's what I'm going to do. And obviously we're picking up the untapped source. I guess there's some argument to picking up Vesuva so we can copy a Valcut with it. It's reasonable. Now we have to play land drop. Yeah, now we won't be able to pick up and play Vesuva as a Valcut, so maybe picking up this here, since we drew the Stronghold as an additional untapped source, maybe that would have been better, but Crash Through is very scary. Creatures they control gain trample until end of turn, and they draw a card. Okay. So if we pack for Titan, play it, and get double Val Cut after playing a Forest, of course, that would be four triggers for 12 damage, putting our opponent to six. And then a second land drop would be lethal with a double Val Cut in play. So I think it's probably correct not to block here if we can afford it, as we potentially just have a win with Dryad. So better to try to win the game than to try not to lose the game, I think, in a scenario like this. Because otherwise, we don't really have a good route to, to actually win the game here. We'll see, though. <laughs> Another crash through is interesting. I don't know if that's particularly good for our opponent, but... I mean, we're looking at 7 damage here, plus 1 from the Law of Dart would be 8, 9, 10, 11. So right now, they have 11 damage on board. If they had a Bolt, then we would just be dead exactly, I'm pretty sure, right? This was 11, right? 4, 5, 6... 789 plus 1 from the prowess from the Lava Dart is 10, 11. So Lightning Bolt would be 14 plus 2 here. Oh, no. So that wouldn't even be exact. We'd just be really dead there. I wonder if they could Lava Dart and Bolt Dryad and still get in for lethal. It would be 5 from the Swift Spear and 8 here. And they have Bolt. They have deemed to throw a Bolt at our Dryad. Fair enough. Got shot. Okay, that probably is lethal. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 with the, the dart. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, well, yeah, we just lose here. Let's let our opponent play it out. They do have to sacrifice a mountain, so if they didn't have the foundry in play, then they potentially wouldn't be able to flashback lava dart. Interesting to note. And yeah, we're super dead. Good games. And we ended up 3-2, and two, which is actually not the worst record. I'm pretty happy with that. So, some thoughts on the deck. Obviously, playing Tribe Scout is going to make our uh, prowess mashup, for example, worse. And that's just something you accept playing Tribe Scout. I do think that the arches and the sideboard, even though we didn't get to see them, I think that just being able to cut these and play a couple of grazers instead... Or maybe just play the Grazers in the main like the original list had already. I think that would be better. I haven't played the list with Grazer instead of Scout. I've seen a little bit of that played. And I don't know if I have any strong opinions on which is better. So I can't really speak to that. But at least having Grazers over the Arches in the sideboard seems like a good idea. This this card just seems too cute. A two mana, zero four defender is not that great. And tapping it to gain one life, you're probably doing pretty good if you manage to put a Arch into play in our stabilizing. and then. The sacrifice to learn, you're never going to do that. The, the reason you board this card in is because you want a 2-mana 0-4 defender. So, I think this card right here is too cute, and I would not play it for sure. So, as of currently, just assuming we're not playing Grazer in the main, I would most certainly get a couple copies in the sideboard here. In addition, I do feel like some of these these lessons are better than the others. I think that basic conjuration is fine. It's not like amazing. We have seen it miss before, similar to how turn timber symbiosis does not always hit either. Obviously, conjuration is going to be better if you have additional creatures from the sideboard like tracker that you want to board in as well. Um, conjuration is kind of hit or miss, but I think it's fine. Containment breach seems good, obviously. We never got to use pest summoning, but to me, 
paying three mana to field trip and then search for a pest summoning and then playing paying three mana to cast pest summoning seems very slow. I feel like many times if you're getting a pest summoning, you are already pretty ahead if you have the time to cast three mana to, to, to make a pest summoning happen. So I don't think the summoning is really necessary. We never got to use the mascot exhibition, but I like it in theory. So like one of the ideas is that tr field trip allows you to learn for an actual threat, meaning that your field trip can do something meaningful against a control or otherwise grindy deck. Sometimes basic conjuration is just not where you want to be against those decks, as not only is conjuration itself weak to potential counter magic or whatever, but it's also possible for you to conjuration into a lone tribe scout and just feel bad about it. And it's not even like the, the scout would get counters like from a turn timber symbiosis. Nope, it's just a scout. And we even encountered that in one of our matches here. So I think that having the mascot exhibition as an additional threat actually makes a lot of sense to me, even though we never really got to cast it. I feel like that would come into play against the really grindier control matchups. So for that reason, I think you probably would still want to play it. We never got to play environmental sciences. Um, I still like the theory behind this card. I think it's very innocuous and many other content creators who've looked at the deck list I feel like they miss the the point of a card like Environmental Sciences. It's to ensure another land drop and gain just a little bit of life and be able to do so easily. You know, throwing away two mana is something you can do pretty easily if you have an extra two mana from Bounce Land and Amulet, for example. So I think that Environmental Sciences is fine. Like you could turn three field trip, turn four Sciences for another land, play it, play a three drop, and that's still good value, I think. So... I don't mind it. Maybe it's not the most impactful, but I wouldn't mind keeping that one here. I've looked at the other lessons as well, and I didn't see any that interested in me. So if you have any suggestions to other lessons that could be played, there was like a blue, like a transmogrify effect, basically, where it turned a creature either into a 1-1 or a 4-4. And I think it's just too cute. And we also don't play enough blue sources for it, probably. So that was the only one that really caught my eye, however, when I looked through them. Let me know if you think otherwise. As for the actual strategy of using Field Trip as sort of a value sideward tutor here, I don't think that it's as strong as playing an additional threat like Karn the Great Creator or even just Tireless Tracker in the main. The idea is that you're trying to use Field Trip to both ramp and get some amount of value, but the value you're getting from your sideboard is very debatable. Like I said, Conjuration's hit or miss. Containment Breach is great whenever your opponent's playing artifacts or enchantments you want to target, but other than that, it's not really relevant. Mascot Exhibition is expensive and definitely not as good as just having a Primeval Titan or even drawing a bunch of cards with a tracker. And Sciences is already debatably worth the inclusion, so getting the extra card from Field Trip doesn't seem that necessary. And in that case, I'd rather just have more copies of Explorer or other threats that are more meaningful if they resolve like Karn. So I do think it's worse in that regard than those cards and strategies. That said, I don't think that you're making your deck significantly worse by playing Field Trip. I think that it's slightly worse than playing just without Field Trip, but not by a whole lot. So if you want to do something to have some fun, try out some new stuff in Amulet and uh, catch an opponent off guard, just a, a, a list to play at your local game store for a bit of a meme or whatever, just because you feel like playing Field Trip, I definitely could see it there, but I don't think it's going to be the most competitive version of Amulet going forward. Um, one thing that I should mention, this list is crying out for a Ghost Quarter. I completely missed when I looked over the original deck list that there was no Ghost Quarter in the 75, and then we played against Tron in our league here, and that's when it hit me. There's no Ghost Quarter in the main board. There's no Ghost Quarter in the sideboard. You are just stranded out in the middle of nowhere against Tron, and Ghost Quarter is really important, let me tell you. So I definitely think that we need a copy of Ghost Quarter in the list. So I'll drop this one in here, and I think it's easiest just to cut a forest. It's nice having access to a bunch of basics, but honestly, you're never realistically going to be casting more than one or two field trips during the course of your game, of course. and it's not like you're frequently fetching out your basics or anything. We do have a couple fetch lands, but like if you fetch for a basic forest and field trip for another one, you still got two forests left to go. Maybe you run out in the long game against more grindy decks, but that's not really the point of field trip anyways. The field trip there is mainly to get the threat 
out of the sideboard or a relevant card like Conjuration or whatever. So I don't think that's the biggest of deals. So I definitely would make this change to include the Ghost Quarter, as much as it pains me to go down on untapped green sources. And yeah, I think that's pretty much where I stand at the moment on the list. I did feel like cutting some Explorers to make room for Field Trip makes some amount of sense. It's possible that Field Trip would be better with a Grazer Shell as well, ensuring that you can cast Field Trip on turn two. Field Trip kind of fixes the fact that the Grazer forces you to commit the Bounce Land in order to cast your three drop on turn two because of the fact that you're getting an additional land out of the Field Trip as well. So if you've got a Bounce Land, a regular land, and cast Field Trip, now you've got four mana. A Garen Brig is immediately Titan mana at that point, and it will enter on tap. A Bounce Land plus Amulet Trigger is Titan mana. Any two lands is Titan Man at that point, and it's pretty easy to draw a couple lands over the course of the game, so you get the idea. I think that Field Trip makes a bit of sense with Grazer, but I haven't played with it, so let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the future, and if you have played with Grazer in this list, and if you prefer it. But yeah, I think I've talked as much about this list as I can at the moment. Maybe we'll look into this deck some more in the future if that's something that I see interest in. But I will say it was fun to play, and regardless, we still got our 3 and 2. We still went infinite, so to speak, and that's all we ever aim to do here. And we were able to find out some interesting things about the deck and make some changes, and I think that's all we're here to do. So hopefully you enjoyed the league. I certainly did. And I will see you guys next week for the next league. This is Redface Menace, signing off.